Hello and welcome to Draw with Jesse. And we are going to keep working on this drawing of an egret um, for using a source photo from the viewer cars. And um, if you haven't started yet, pause here and go um, do the beginning of the drawing. Um, you know, following last week's uh, draw together time, and then come back and watch this one. Um, or you're welcome to stay here and just draw entirely in your own way. Okay, so I'm getting the uh, stream pulled up so I can make sure I actually am live here. If you can hear me and see me, please um, say hello. And okay. Oof. there we go. Fingers crossed. So I'm going to be using a 4B pencil today. I tend to use really soft pencils partly because they show up a lot better on YouTube and partly because I really love soft pencils. So um, I am not seeing the live stream. Enter one more time. And sometimes you just have to refresh a whole bunch of times. <laughs> it's the same for me as it is for you watching and joining. Um, So all the tools I have today are um, paper, and because my pad of paper is so thick, I have to kind of prop it up on the right-hand side if I want it to be um, uh, vertical. Like, uh, and there we go. It looks like I'm live. Okay. And then I have two erasers. One is a kneaded eraser, and um, these are really good especially when you get pretty advanced or you enjoy having fun with um, with your different mark making. Kneaded erasers are fantastic. And then I also have this rubber eraser that's kind of similar to the eraser that goes on the back of your pencil. And you can tell I sharpen it and take off little pieces whenever I'm trying to get a specific shape. And so that's that's a lot of fun too. And, okay, let me see. It looks like I've lost my connection here. I'm trying to refresh. Oh, Milkbone, hello! <laughs> More origami birdie. Oh, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. I think I'm just having trouble loading the stream then. And thank you for your comment and welcome. And let's draw this origami bird. And Okay, so I zoomed out a little bit on the photo so we can see what's happening with this wonderful leg. And last time I was zoomed in a little bit just because this shape is so challenging for me to try to get. So I am going to do some measuring and see how long is that leg compared to the body. Oh, okay. Love that. So I'm finding this part of the body was pretty similar to the top of the leg to the bottom of the foot. Just doing some measuring to see. And then I'm going to double check from the head to the bottom of the shadow in the neck. Really, really similar to that. Okay. Just one more time from the head to the bottom of the, oh, of the shadow on the neck. So it's good to say it out loud so you remember when you get over here. Somewhere in this area. Okay. 
and then I'm going to measure the angle. So I'm just holding my pencil up in front of the photo and then I'm bringing it over here. Keep that same angle. That looks good. That looks like the kind of angle that would help this bird stand up. So just trying to memorize what that angle looks like. And it goes in something like that. And then there's that really fun knee way up here. It's somewhere right in there. That's fun. <laughs> bird knees, for some reason, I just think bird knees are so cute. Um, and, okay. And there's a little bit of a shift. So I'm holding up my pencil again to see, you know, what does the top part of the leg versus the bottom part of the leg look like? So I'm holding it up to the photo, top part of the leg, goes down into the left, bottom part, a little more up and down. <laughs> okay, so seeing a little bit of a bend right here where it comes out this way, and then a little bit more down. So overall, it was this kind of an angle but there is this bend in the middle, so it's a little more angled on top, a little less angled on the bottom. And so now the the real test, does that look like it would hold a bird up? This is kind of, <laughs> it's just such a tiny leg for such a big bulk. Okay, and then there's this rock here. It's really beautiful. And so I'm just gonna measure, you know, what does that angle with the top of the rock look like? I'm kind of putting down what I see, what it feels like, and then just double checking. And this part doesn't matter so much because it's not structural it's not gonna it's not structural to the bird it's not gonna look like it's wrong if it's a different shape and over here let's see and what makes it look like a rock and not just a piece of wood or something a little bit of these striations here. There are all these like vertical striations. Awesome, Milkbone, you're drawing with me today. Yay! Thank you. That's I love that. And hi, cars, welcome. And so you get some of these striations here, and that helps it feel like a rock. I don't need every single detail. I'm just trying to assess. Like in my own mind, what makes this more natural looking and not so man-made to me? And then, oh, ooh la la, there's that beautiful reflection. I am such a sucker for reflections. So reflections are neat. They come straight at you wherever you are. <laughs> they come right to you. So you can... Um, you can just draw a line straight down from any point and uh, make sure you're on the right track with, um, you know, it might be stretched out more or more shortened, but it'll still be coming right at you, if that makes sense. And, and so there's this water that is Kind of wetting the side or maybe some sort of moss growing or something so yeah so cars welcome and in case you didn't hear me say it thank you so so much for um sharing this beautiful photograph oh my gosh i just i love this so so much and the rock is actually a very weathered submerged tree stump oh 
wow. I love that. Okay, that changes how I think about it. See if that changes how I draw it. Thank you for saying that. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, because it didn't look like a, a pier or something that was, you know, kind of built by humans. But, um, wow, I love that. Okay. Thank you. That totally changes how I feel about this. This Or not how I feel about it. I love it either way. But, you know, it it changes uh, how I'm seeing this uh, tree stump here. Thank you. And, huh, really interesting. Awesome. And so then there's some little toes coming out here. And these guys, I'm just kind of giving the hint of them. Um, so it kind of looks like something's holding the bird up. Um, and sometimes just like a little shadow is enough to, um, to ground something, give it something to be attached to the ground through. And I'm just being really symmetrical here with this dark area and It's hard for me to draw so close to the table. It's funny. A lot of times I'll lift papers up, but just knowing what is hard for your hand to do, a lot of times, um, yeah, it's funny. You can see your marks go funny, and then if you, the more you know about yourself, the less you take it personally and say, oh, I can't make those marks, and the more you just say, yeah, it's a weird angle for me. That's it. And so it's like I can't move my hand quite down enough, so it gets awkward. But um, and so so cars. Let me know. Did you you mentioned that you might do some sketching in at home. Did you, um, or before today? Um, so let me know if you're starting from scratch or if you're kind of at the same point. And milk bone too. I know you were, you had other stuff going on last week where you weren't able to draw some. Let me know if you guys have a sketch in or if you're starting from scratch today. And Oh, yeah, so holding the pencil. That is a great question. I haven't talked about it in so long. So there's the writing um, position for holding a pencil where you're trying to, like, write a letter to somebody or something like that. You're holding it way down here like a chapstick almost, and it gives you a lot of control but no fluidity. Um holding the pencil so you have more fluidity uh, a lot of times people will hold it under their hand if they're if you're able to get like at least one arm's length away from your paper and then you can you can really um get some big movements where you're using your entire arm to make a movement um or if you just hold it at the back half and let the end of your pencil sit on your is sit on your hand like this um, <clears throat> or at least hold it where it's back pretty far you can use your whole hand to make big movements that you're just not able to when you're crunched up on the end of it and it also it kind of pushes you back from your paper so you have a better view of everything that's happening instead of getting completely focused on one little thing so I absolutely recommend to anybody who is kind of new to drawing, try moving your hand back. Um, give yourself enough room that you can really move your wrist around. And then just kind of practice like making circles and seeing how 
how this makes a different kind of circle than than this and um there will be some comfortable place for you where the pencil is back far and you'll feel like you just have more flexibility and um and this is how i do it generally speaking uh back as far as i can and um it you, you just you're kind of using your whole hand a lot differently and your wrist and your whole arm Oh, wow. Okay, so we got more backstory here. Um, Carl says the pond was made by people as a mill pond. Um, so it was only a river until people flooded it. Um, as many stumps from the trees that stood there, maybe a hundred years ago or more. And then the mill dirt burned down um, in the early 1960s. Wow. That must be a really beautiful pond. Wow, that sounds so interesting. And Milkbone, congratulations on your new puppy. That sounds wonderful. And um, yeah. yeah, I get that the puppies can be expensive. Yeah, congratulations, that sounds really cute. So with these fresh eyes, I'm trying to find what are some details that feel important or some different things that feel important that I missed. And what do I really want this drawing to be? So I love this beak and the eye and the face and um, these different, like really subtle shadows on the birds. I'm just kind of hunting around for what's interesting here. And let's see. And the background is beautiful too. I think I'm gonna focus on the bird unless you guys wanna see how I handle the background in a drawing like this, um, in which case let me know. But otherwise I'm just gonna keep focusing on this bird and really look for Where's some lights and shadows? And so this shape right here is kind of broken up by shadow. And I think this is the part that makes it the hardest for me to draw this accurately. This shape right here just confuses me so much. And, um, and I'm embarrassed to say I have not had a chance yet to look at the other photos you sent me Chris, to as reference for how exactly this body structure works and um, I will have to do that while I'm thinking about it after this. Thank you so much for sending this. Oh my gosh. So I'm just marking off where are some shadows and then um, and then I'm just doing some hash marks to darken that part up and then out here this part is much more shadowed. This back wing here and so let's see and right up in here I'm just trying to eyeball where are these shadows and leaving a little bit of a delineation of the um, the light coming along I'm just going to try to avoid darkening that too too much um, so it looks like there's a shadow right in here and right in there and this area it's really interesting the darkest shadows look like they're right here and right here and then the there's the shadow from the neck that is really telling about where exactly the sun is that it must be pretty high let's see we can find that sun it must be somewhere around there but much much higher and let's see so that's just helping me understand a little bit more what's happening 
with some of these highlights and shadows in here. And and <laughs> awesome. So uh, somebody brought up a very good point here about composition and where you put things and where I chose to put this bird this time is just that it's where I chose to put it this time and if if I was drawing this again I might um, I might just zoom in here or I might zoom in here um, and there's no right or wrong about that. So wherever you've put your bird on the page is the right place for it to live. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Cars. And, and um, yeah, I think one of the really neatest things about drawing is that all of us are going to make so many different choices. Um, and... You know, the choice that you make today would be completely different than the choice you would make tomorrow. And, um, you know, you are the artist you are at this very second, just right now. It's just, I don't know, I, there's something so neat about that. And um, so, yep, where you put that bird, that's exactly the right place for it to be. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So this shadow, I'm trying to get the edge of the shadow to be kind of behind the head a little bit. So it puts it into a three dimensional shape and not ending exactly in the same place as the curve of the head. If that makes sense. Um, I just want the head, the neck here to overlap that shadow a smidge to kind of make it more clear what's happening. And <laughs> that bird, it does look so happy. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, so it. I'm seeing that this part is lighter than this part, so I'm adding a little bit of shadow here. And that's all I'm looking around for is what parts look really light. So like this part here looks really light to me. Which means that the stuff around it must be slightly darker. Right. Um, and I'm just, I'm not trying to make smooth lines or... Uh, anything. I'm just getting in some hash marks, just some little lines right next to each other. And then I'm looking at where else is it like darker or lighter than other things. So this spot right here looks a little lighter. It's a little touch of sunlight hitting that. And then it's kind of reflecting out there, but I'm going to ignore that part. <laughs> Even though it's, it's very pretty, but um, that would I think that's one of those things, if I get the picture really looking solid, I might come back and revisit that, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, at that kind of a point yet. So the forehead here, and then maybe the top part of this beak look like there's a lot of great light on them and ends are down there which means the rest of this I'm putting a little bit of these hash marks in and so far they're going up kind of this way and that way and that's all right oh yeah 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 cool <laughs> awesome well I appreciate you sending them so much I um I I don't know if I've, if you've been seeing the stuff I've been posting lately, I've been, uh, 
kind of running around like a crazy woman. I have two solo shows that, um, as they're currently set, will happen. There will be a little bit of an overlap. Um, <laughs> so I need to have enough paintings for both shows to paint simultaneously. And, and um, I, I finally, I, I decided I might as well just ask if they actually care the date what the dates are and um so one of them might get moved and then um and then it'll just be a question of having the best paintings I possibly can um I have enough work now for um I I could fill the spaces but I really want to have a lot more new fresh work and work that's like specific to the sh- exhibition and so anyways I'm I've been in a little bit of panic with that <laughs> and then I'm um I'm actually teaching a uh a um painting or um drawing for a watercolor painters class and so I've been doing a lot of planning for that so um so <laughs> I just I have things that's like, oh yeah, I'm going to look at those right away. And then I realize that um, a week has gone by. It's like, oh man, I really wanted to see that. <laughs> uh, so, oh my gosh, I love that bird's face. It's so cool. So, yeah, it is is turning out to be a really, really neat class. I was invited by the um, uh, Great Plains Watercolor Society to do it, but I I think I'm gonna run the class again um, in the future because it it seems like it's a really neat class. People are responding well. And it's a a neat group of artists, so that's fun. Um, But yeah. And let's see. So I'm just looking for what do I see? I'm kind of loving how it's coming out. This is really fun. <laughs> um, so this part just really keeps standing out to me more than I feel like I want it to. And so even though I'm seeing this really bright highlight here, uh, this part. I think I have not shadowed this enough yet to just be kind of accurate. But then also I feel like I can just shadow the whole thing a bit more just because just to show my preferences here. What, what do I think is important and want to stand forward? And then under the wing, there's this wonderful shadow. And so the darker I go down here, you know, when I squint, this wing still seems like at least not lighter than this part. And so when I adjust one thing darker, I might have to go back and adjust everything darker. And that's kind of how the painting builds up or the, the drawing builds up, right? And so there's this lovely little end of the wings here. So, I might play around with that a little bit more, but I'm just kind of making a a little end, a little tuxedo <laughs> tuxedo tails right there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah, blend with your finger if that's what you have handy for sure. It's one of the best tools, absolutely, and. Um, and I, um, I just try, and you can tell I have my hand all over this drawing right now. I just try somewhat to uh, not rub my hand in it unintentionally and smear stuff around and get oils on it. Um, and, and I know that there are some very organized people who do use blending sticks and stuff like that instead of fingers every time. Um, but, but I say, uh, if, uh, 
If you want to blend something and your finger's right there, go for it. <laughs> That's awesome. And a dry paintbrush or Q-tip. Nice. Ah, I love your comments, Chris. Your your suggestions. Thank you for Yeah. And Okay, and then there's this, the way the light is coming through here is so beautiful and complicated. Um, and so I'm just trying to start with uh, looking around and seeing what is darker than something next to it, and I haven't indicated that yet. And so... Um, And what is lighter than something next to it? And I haven't indicated that yet. So I'm getting kind of more and more specific. And I'm seeing that this big white shape I have here is kind of broken up on the bird into a plane here and then a plane on the side that's a little bit darker. So I'm just going to add a little bit of hatches over here. And this I made as a really hard line, but it's kind of just a highlight coming around the edge of this wing. So let's see what I can do. And just soften this up a little bit so it's not um, like its own form. Like right now it feels like its own shape instead of just the edge of this shape. And <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, it might be fun seeing you guys chat. Uh, to someday just use fingers and erasers, like maybe some charcoal and some fingers and erasers and see how that goes. Cause I bet that would be a lot of fun. And you're right. <laughs> it's a tool you never forget. And... <laughs> and... Okay. So... Just softening up around some of these things where, um, you know, the outline was just there. Uh, you know, it's not like a darker outline on the actual bird. And gosh, look, it's getting pretty darn close. What do I see here? So I'm just looking at the photo and looking at my bird to see what's what's really standing out just with the values. I'm just looking at values now. Um, you know, if I notice that maybe I do something funny, I would change it, but it's not really my main thing I'm looking for. Um, I feel like there's this darker shadow here and here and here that um, that are neat and beautiful and I haven't quite darkened into those yet so there we go and so let me know if either of you I was kind of thinking about sometimes it's neat to just zoom in on one part and really um, focus on that and um, and so if you guys would like me to zoom in on that face and um, and really focus on that just let me know um, I wanted to leave that leg there in case um, anybody wanted to draw that since like I had <laughs> I had not drawn it last time <laughs> and uh, so I'm just going to give it a little darkness. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I... All right. I Let's do it. Yeah, so we'll see where we are with the um, with the bird at the end today, and then um, and then if if you guys are all feeling like you're done with this drawing, maybe we could have a finger drawing next time. And okay, so you can see I'm crunching up on my pencil because now I'm getting into details. Um, and I'm still holding my finger out to make my hand steady so I can actually get details in here without having my hand flip off this way or that way. Um, and so um, there is a really good time and place to crunch up on the front of your pencil. And... Okay, so there's this cute little cheek here. Oh my gosh. And... <laughs> awesome. So what about you, Milkbone? Would you like me to zoom in on that face so we can... Um, did you want to see those details at all? Or are you happy looking at it bigger? Let me know. I just, I'm really partial to drawings that are super sketchy in some areas and then a little bit more refined in other areas. And, uh, and so it's fun putting in the details and to me committing to putting in details over here does not commit me to put in details anywhere else. It's, uh, there we go. And let's do it. All right. And... Okay, so this is always a funny process here. Um, yep, that one. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get the right thing. Okay, and I might do a little switcheroo on the sides. Oh, what a gorgeous photo. Ooh. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm going to try to switch sides here. And wow, it's gorgeous. Okay. And then maybe just a little bit more zoom in. Ooh. All right. Let's try that. Ah, gorgeous. Holy moly, what a pretty bird. Okay. <laughs> okay, so moving stuff around, sometimes I end up getting like right between the um, the camera and the paper. So, yeah. Cool. Well, um, let me know if you want me to go back uh, to the other, um, you know, to the more zoomed out version and um and also like i said there's no problem with if you decide to finish one part of a drawing and um anything else it's it's a really neat technique um and it doesn't always have to be the face i've seen drawings where somebody will like really finish out you know a foot or hand and then just kind of indicate that there's more there without getting into any detail and okay wow that's interesting okay so there's this really strong orange line that comes right out and so sometimes if you're pushing really hard you make a groove in your paper and it's hard to overcome that and sometimes there's just already a groove in the paper and it's, you know, from like a previous drawing on a previous page, scrunched through somehow or, and your pencil just wants to go off in a funny direction. And, um, 
And uh, so, anyways, I was getting a lot of a little bit of that right there. It's like I'm trying to go up and it's going down. Oh, okay. And so there's this beautiful eye that's. Wow, that is so interesting. So interesting. Okay, so I'm going to erase some of this and give it another shot. And oh my gosh. I, um, you know how people post like little um, cute little sayings that are supposed to be inspirational, but this or that and somebody posted something that said um uh basically like don't be afraid to <clears throat> change something like change a mistake just because you've put so much time into making it <laughs> and i know it was relationship advice but it feels like it could be art advice like just because i've spent five minutes putting that peak where it is does not mean I shouldn't change it if I see I don't like it, um, you know, once I ha have more information. And yeah, they, this is such a cute little beard, right? <laughs> Oh, boy, I would love to know if their little beards are different. Yeah. Can you tell the difference between these different birds? Like, do they have names? Do you, I mean, do, do you name them or say, oh, that's the cranky one or that's the, that's the really friendly one? Here, I'm just trying to figure out what are some landmarks I can find to help me find this eyeball. And so... I've got the point here where there's this kind of the edge of the beak and then the face and there's this triangle and that is kind of helping me get in the right direction. And then it's got this like really wild eyebrow kind of situation right here. And then this beautiful I never really thought of these guys so much as birds of prey until I looked at this eye. <laughs> that, that is the eye of of somebody that could definitely be hunting right now. That's interesting. Uh, okay, it's just so clear, so clear eyed. And oh, beautiful. Sandhill Cranes. That sounds beautiful. Uh, are they are they gray or? <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna sharpen this pencil a little bit. Sometimes you really need a good point on your pencil. And um, even though this pencil has a nice, whoop, a nice long point, it is not a sharp enough point to actually get a pupil of an eyeball on it, on what's turning out to be a very small area of the drawing. And, okay. Here's all that juggling. Uh, light gray with huge legs. Ooh, that sounds gorgeous. Wow. That sounds gorgeous. And... So this is the kind of thing that you get too much detail and then it's really hard to move it if it's in the wrong place. Um, and part of what looks 
so predatory to me is the fact that the top half of the pupil is kind of almost obscured or so let's see if I can get that a little bit wow so pretty okay and then huh that's really interesting then there's this like, shadow right down here wow, wow, wow. and a little beard <laughs> oh boy let's see so so for me I when I get a really sharp pencil I'm looking for what are the other things that I can do with a really sharp pencil before it gets dull um, and I wouldn't necessarily want to jump into hash marks now uh, although I'm very tempted because they'll just be so much skinnier than everything else I've got here and might as well take advantage of this um, sharp pencil while I've got it since it, uh, especially a 4B the sharpness isn't going to last that long um, okay so I'm just trying to see where are these dark darks and how do I show what I'm seeing on the face? I know it's very misleading to me um, because the this part's so dark it looks like an eye from a distance and then the eye blends in. It's so light. It's really interesting. Okay, so let's see. That got wonky looking. I think I'm going to have to step back. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, I've got a bird loving dog also. Um, not so much the geese overhead, but the um, all the birds that like to walk around on the on the yard. Ah. <laughs> uh. And so the shadow on the, here, I don't want the shadow to be quite that dark, but you can see I used my sharpened pencil, so it really stuck. Okay, and the other thing that you can do if you get a pencil that's too sharp, even though this might sound silly, is uh, you can do the opposite of the sharpening and just kind of soften it up a smidge. Um, <laughs> and, you know, they do go both directions. And so this is better. These marks aren't going to be so hard to erase if I change my mind. And so, just trying to get the details in here of, um, yeah, I love the idea of just having, especially some details right in here in this super wild, bizarre um, face. It's so pretty. And thinking about, let's see. Yeah, you know what? Um, <laughs> if if you end up drawing more of a made up different kind of animal, that's cool and awesome too. Uh, there's such a with so many animals, um, yeah. You know, just these tiny little variations will turn it into a different animal that you know. Like I paint a lot of cows and you know if you make them too skinny they kind of turn into different kind of animals or if you make them too short they turn into other animals and um 
and you know it's just it's really interesting but um at the end of a day if you're if you're putting something in your sketchbook and you started off drawing an egret and it turns into a different kind of bird it doesn't hurt anything <laughs> that's it's kind of cool and awesome and you can absolutely go for it that's, yeah but it's really the seeing that is the hardest to do and so just the seeing and the noticing is uh, you know, it's so huge and, um, you know, so I say, give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, geese are, yeah, they're strong too. They are, they are really strong critters. I have this weird memory of getting bitten by a goose when I was a little kid, and I, I can't honestly remember if it was me or if I watched another kid get bitten. But they've got this, uh, like, they're just so strong. <laughs> and, uh, Yeah, I think if they're still willing to drop it, it means they're not, um, you know, they're not like uncontrollable. <laughs> they're just, they're just kind of figuring out like, you know. Uh, okay, so let's see. Just trying to see, did I get the darkest darks where they go? I like how it looks way up close. Here, I will. Yep. Okay, so I like how the face is looking up close. And I think I need to get further away to decide how it looks uh, from a distance. Okay, so I'm trying to stand as far away as I can in my studio and just see what I think here. I think the value shift from the head to the neck is more extreme than it should be. And so this is kind of what this part of a drawing is for me is just a million little corrections of and every time every time you make a correction it gets a little bit closer to where you're going <laughs> yeah these are some pretty old erasers <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, oh my gosh, I love this light on the cheek. It's so gorgeous. And so I'm just going to get a little bit more of that. And then there's this beautiful light coming through here. And if you're putting in like a really dark background, you're going to have a different effect with how dark and light you're drawing is uh, <laughs> that is okay both my erasers here are, are super old it's really funny but oh my gosh you get a good one you gotta hang on to it I I got a new needed eraser about a month ago I don't know if you saw that it was horrible it was sticky it felt icky to use and I'm like okay I'm gonna keep using this one that probably is 25 years old uh, but yeah, 
You find one that's good, you got to hang on to that <laughs> until it's all the way worn out. <laughs> uh, and so there's this beautiful light. It's so subtle. And the beak's a bit darker. I'm going to leave that be for a little while and just kind of see what I can do around here. And... <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then get some of this light in here. It's so soft. Like you can see all these little soft feathers when you get up close. It's really lovely. So, so I'm just going to kind of put down the marks and then soften right into them. And I might get rid of some of my extraneous things out here. See, I keep putting this into a point so I can get it to kind of do what I want. And I kind of like some of these. You know, I'm trying to keep the lines I like and get rid of the ones that are annoying me. And Oh, thanks for the likes. <laughs> I appreciate that. And uh, it really, it does help. It helps YouTube decide whether to uh, let other people see my uh, videos and stuff. So <clears throat> I appreciate it a ton. And, uh, and I always forget to ask, too. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, yay. Thank you. And okay, and then so there's this subtleness here that I'd really like to capture. So I'm just going to get a little bit of hashing right in here. And now that I'm getting so close, I'm seeing um, it might be fun to have these like loose marks down here and this more realistic business happening up, up in here. And so let's see. So there's this little bit of a darker area here. And also for anybody who um, ha is, um, well, who doesn't know already, if you use a pencil and it just keeps breaking, like you sharpen it and it breaks, you sharpen it and it breaks, then the pencil is bad like somebody probably dropped that box of pencils um, and if you notice it right away you might be able to take it back and say hey that was a bad pencil um, but also it means it's not you and uh, if you can set that one aside and not use it you'll save yourself some frustration but also if you're trying to draw and you get like where it feels like you're pushing hard enough but you're not putting any marks down then there's some sort of impurity in the pencil. And, um, and so you can just take a piece of paper, or sandpaper or something like that and get the impurity out and then it'll work normally again. Um, so those are just a couple little, little frustrations people can get. And the other thing I should mention, because I probably haven't mentioned it forever, is that um, pencils are not for everybody. Um, some people who have sensory issues, especially like kids with sensory issues, who um, pencils can really be frustrating because they constantly change. And so like the sensory input is like different for every single mark you're making because they're just getting softer, 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 and then you sharpen them and then softer, softer. So if you feel like you are noticing your pencil getting duller and it annoys you and it makes it harder to concentrate on drawing, then use a pen instead. Oh, yay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 
definitely we can also drop our own pencils and have to and have to live with the consequences that is so so true uh, and I think everybody's done that it's oh yeah for sure mm -hmm. yeah well, that's interesting yeah it just it just interesting like everybody has such different um experiences with earth supplies you know like for me i i found it really relaxing using clay and getting my hands dirty and i love that and i um when i was in college if i'd be stressed out i would go to the ceramics lab and just like throw pots on the wheel and then scrunch them right back down and do it again and um i didn't even want to you know cook them and turn them into real you know permanent things i just wanted the experience of having my hands dirty um and you know and then for other people that's it's just unpleasant or um just downright painful or something and it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And okay, so I'm just trying to make it. There's this beautiful softness here. But then there's this beautiful shadow over here. So I'm trying to find the right balance to kind of express what I'm seeing. And there we go. Oh, and wow, I can't believe it's two o'clock already. Um, what do you guys think? Would you like to continue this drawing next time or shall we start something new? I um, I would be happy either way. I think, um, I feel like this is so close. Um, be interesting to see where it went of just like, okay, you've got more time with this. What happens? It's an interesting question. Um, but also there's so many wonderful, amazing things to draw and um, and I would, I could walk away from this drawing right now and feel like, yeah, that's, I feel pretty good about that. So let me know where you're at with, with yours. If you'd rather draw this guy some more or start something fresh. And let's see, I'm just going to soften that right there. Sounds awesome. So, Milkba, do you have like a charcoal? Would you enjoy some finger charcoal drawing or pencil smudging, which you kind of have to have a soft pencil for if you really, really want to take advantage of it? Um, okay. <laughs> very, very cool. And so, anyways, I don't want to uh do a charcoal project if um if everybody doesn't have charcoal because uh, that's that's no fun speaking of which i heard some artists talking recently i guess not that recently a, a while back about making their own charcoal it sounded really interesting like of course you can do that it's kind of surprised like why haven't I ever <laughs> made my own charcoal? <laughs> Never even thought about it. Um, there we go. Finally. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, so it's, yeah. Um, the other things that are on my list of things that I've been wanting to do um, are like some little composition sketches 
I think it'd be really fun to just kind of look at like how do you decide where to put a thing on your page um, and um, we did a series of like close-up of an eye close-up of an ear I think it'd be fun to do more in that series like uh, yeah like this eye just looking at that Ooh, what if we just like did a close-up of that so um, <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, I I don't know what the process is like for making your own charcoal, but it sounds cool, right? So, I know. Well, what do you think if next week we do something like some close-ups of some eyes and um and then in the future if we want to do some charcoal business we can do that but for next week we don't have to get any new supplies good yeah she's good she's uh still got some happy chickens and um yeah, she's working on a lot of neat projects, so. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And so just let me know if you want a shout out with your Insta, uh, cause I would love to give you one, but I, I don't want to do that if, um, if, uh, unless you would like it and yeah, cool. Well, why don't we next week, we'll just do pencils and we'll look at some eyeballs again and do some close ups cause I don't know there's something so satisfying about drawing an eye. I don't know. I think so at least. They're just they're so recognizable so quickly. And um I don't know. It's a lot of fun. And uh Okay. So, yeah, I will I will pass on your compliments to Johnny. <laughs> Pat, hi, welcome. Uh, awesome. Um, that is absolutely great. I love seeing different drawings and everybody comes up with such different artwork. It's wonderful. That's, that's one of the things that's just so neat to see. So that's fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> awesome. Well, I, uh, will bid you adieu. Thank you for the likes. I really appreciate that. Um, oh, and here's how this guy ended out. Um, and whoop. thank you so much cars for sharing your beautiful egret photo. I just, uh, it's so stunning. And, um, it was great to see you guys today. Oh, excellent. <laughs> so if you would like to see Carr's, um, drawings, she's just an amazing artist. It's wonderful to see. And she's on Instagram at Hazel Maisel Weasel. Um, and that's H A Z E L M A I S E L W A Z E L. Um, and so just wonderful. And thank you. And, um, I will see you guys same time next week.